What would happen if you truly understood these seven truths and how they impact blood sugar spikes? If you're looking to reverse type 2 diabetes and fix blood sugar issues, these will help you to achieve that outcome. All right, so let's start with truth number seven and end on truth number one. Here we go. Here's truth number seven. Meal timing. Eating too close to bedtime is a mistake. Sleep is when the body does its critical overnight work of hitting the resets button, so to speak. Now, hitting that reset button requires that you're getting good quality regular sleep. And digesting a meal, especially a heavy meal, close to bedtime, leads to struggles with controlling blood sugar and achieving any kind of real glycemic control. It makes it more challenging and more likely, frankly, that blood sugar will spike during the night when blood sugar should be resetting to a healthy range, like say 75 to 99 overnight. It's best to eat your final meal of the day at least three to five hours before bedtime, giving your gut a chance to do its work before you lay down to go to sleep. This gives your gut time to digest that food and help support having even balanced blood sugar levels and no spikes during the night when you are asleep. So eating too close to bedtime is a common mistake that people make. Now, why would meal timing be important here? If you eat too close to bed, then that means so much of your energy, your digestive energy is being used up when you're sound asleep. And that's going to digest that meal and break it down because it was eaten too close to bedtime. And this is what can lead to blood sugar spikes. This common mistake people make, so think about it. You know, are you eating your last meal of the day and allowing yourself enough time between the end of that meal and when you go to sleep so you can minimize the likelihood of blood sugar spikes while you're resting? All right, now here's truth number six. If you eat a diet of highly processed, ultra-refined, low-nutrient foods, also known as junk foods, a key problem is that they lack nutrient density. These junk foods are fast foods, they aren't nutritious. One of the problems, and frankly, there's many with these things, but one of the problems with these foods is that you won't feel full. You don't feel satiated. You don't feel satisfied when eating junk foods. They're quick, they're easy, they're convenient, but they do take a toll and you do pay a price for them. You won't be able to tell when it's time to stop eating. Unfortunately, these junk foods are often designed that way. It's a feature, not a bug. The food industry wants you to enjoy and eat these things. And frankly, they're highly processed and they're ultra refined foods that are designed to make you overeat. They want you to eat too much so you keep buying their products. That makes their business more profitable. Frankly, it robs you of your health. And so it's likely that it's going to be a struggle to resist that temptation. And it makes it very likely that you'll experience blood sugar spikes because those foods break down quickly. They're usually really high in simple, unfortunately, really fast processed carbohydrates, the kind that spike blood sugar. So in particular, because these uh, nutrient poor foods, these ultra fine, highly processed foods are rich in simple carbohydrate content. It breaks down really quickly and it hits your bloodstream, boom, and your insulin response is going to overshoot. So this can really be an issue. It can lead to you feeling tired, feeling brain fogged, feeling hangry, not feeling well, you know, and here come the blood sugar spikes. Not a surprise, right? Okay, so let's talk about truth number five. All right, here we go. Number five, chronic stress. Listen, stress is a challenge. It can be a trigger for blood sugar spikes. You might be aware that stress in and of itself can trigger blood sugar spikes. A number of things qualify as stress too. Obviously, there's possibilities for emotional stress, social stress, financial stress, other kinds of worries, trauma, accidents, and surgery. These are all stresses that can lead to an increased likelihood of having blood sugar spikes. And sometimes people aren't aware that things like surgery um, or being ill, having an illness like a cold or a flu or something like that, pneumonia, can absolutely lead to blood sugar numbers just going haywire in that moment. Now, when we have too much stress too often, various systems in our bodies really start to struggle. And one of them is blood sugar control, also called glycemic control. Our glycemic regulation or blood sugar control goes right out the window. And as a result, if you have chronic stress, your baseline level of blood sugar may already be at a high level. So the more that you have chronic stress, the higher it is. So instead of your baseline being at a healthy level, it might be here because you have chronically high stress and then your blood sugar builds on top of that. So instead of it going from a normal to maybe the upper range of normal, it's going to go from high to even higher and could truly be a blood sugar spike. Therefore, your blood sugar is much more likely to continue to rise and rise and rise. And so if you're struggling with this, please know that stress really can be quite a um, bully around how it responds with your blood sugar responses. So this is not going to be a good thing. It could cause blood sugar spikes and in response to the stress that you are experiencing. 
What are your thoughts on this? Please let us know in the comments below and hit the subscribe button. All right, here's number four, okay? So number four truth, overeating and a lack of portion control. And I am not talking about willpower here. It is not linked to that. These aren't the same things. Blood sugar spikes can happen from this simply because the body's overwhelmed. Your stomach has too much food in it at any one time to actually process and digest. And as a result, your ability to regulate your blood sugar is compromised and your blood sugar spikes. It goes up. All right, here's truth number three. That is eating foods in the wrong order. Consider how you eat your foods. It does matter for best blood sugar balance. And this is one that's really underappreciated and it's very simple to implement. Sometimes people want to start out with, say, eating simple carbohydrates or, you know, the things that they really enjoy in their meal, stuff they really like, maybe sweet or savory or umami in taste. That could be foods that are full with flour, with sugar, added sugar, gravy, things of that nature. All of these are likely to cause blood sugar spikes. So if you want to avoid blood sugar spikes, it's better to eat food in a healthier order, especially if you're trying to monitor your blood sugar and improve it. So one of the things that's important would be to eat your proteins and your high fiber foods fast, like leafy green vegetables, along with any healthy fats. The proteins can be meat, fish, seafood, poultry, or plant-based, such as beans, peas, and legumes. Examples of healthy fats include nuts and seeds, avocados, things like that. Next to eat are slow-burning, resistant starches, and complex carbohydrates. These are foods that break down slowly and evenly, and they are a good category of carbohydrates. They're quite healthy for us. Examples of that would be beans, peas, and legumes. You'll notice some foods are in more than one category, and that is fine. Mother Nature has packaged this up for our best benefit. Dead last or not at all would be simple carbohydrates because they hit your blood sugar like a bomb. Boom. Not a good thing and absolutely directly to blood sugar spikes. This would be simple sugars, sugar, as we all know what it is, or added sugar. If you have any added sugars or simple sugars in your foods, do your best to avoid them and ideally eliminate them. If you're going to eat them, eat them last and definitely not first. I hope that's clear. All right. So moving on. Here's truth number two. This would be an issue where, for whatever reason, your gut's microbiome is impaired. The gut microbiome is the ecosystem, the collection of all the organisms like bacteria, fungi, and other microbes that live inside the gut and interact with the rest of our body to help, in part, determine our blood sugar reactions to what we eat and drink. Now, a dysfunctional gut microbiome is another common reason that blood sugar spikes occur. If you have a history of overuse or repeated use of antibiotics, perhaps prescribed to you for the wrong reasons, or maybe you thought you needed antibiotics and you didn't, and your healthy microbiome was weakened by the use of, or frankly, the overuse of these medications. Maybe you had a viral illness, for example, not a bacterial illness, and you were insisting on antibiotics, or someone gave you an antibiotic prescription by mistake. This is a classic way people get into a problem with their microbiome. Maybe as a kid, you had lots and lots of antibiotics repeatedly in your childhood, perhaps for ear infections. So your gut's microbiome was disrupted from an early age. This may have prevented the gut from really establishing healthy floor and being able to maintain it from your childhood forward now into your adult years. This can lead to issues later with increased vulnerability to having blood sugar spikes. And now then, finally, let's get to it. Truth number one around issues with blood sugar spikes. This one might be a surprise. Are you ready? People just about never guess this. I'm gonna pause here for just a moment. What do you think about this? What do you think the number one reason could be why blood sugar spikes happen? Let us know in the comments below and hit the subscribe button. Okay, truth number one. It can be due to a lack of sleep. Ha <laughs> that's right. People underappreciate this one, you know? So here's the deal. Sleep is the opportunity each and every night for your body, your mind, your soul to hit that reset button. Your body, your mind, your soul rest, repair, and restore overnight when you're asleep. And if you don't go to bed at a time that allows you enough time, enough opportunity to do that rest, repair, and restore, then your blood sugar doesn't get to do its well-deserved reset and restoration. So that when you awaken in the morning, you have healthy fasting morning blood sugar numbers. These things take time to achieve. Sleep disorders like sleep apnea can interfere with healthy blood sugar levels. It is harder, sometimes much harder, 
to have glycemic regulation or good blood sugar control if you also have a sleep disorder. Just know that that's another factor to consider if that happens to be part of your own journey. And the good news is when you're asleep is that you're fasting. This is the beautiful news. You're not eating anything. You're not drinking anything. This is when blood sugar should be in the healthy range of 75 to 99 overnight. It's a great opportunity to get back to a healthy blood sugar level if you weren't already there when you went to sleep. So if you didn't give yourself enough time to sleep from when you ate your last meal and then went to sleep and got up the next morning, frankly, you're cheating yourself of the opportunity to enjoy healthy blood sugar numbers overnight. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. If you like this video, please help my channel grow by liking the video, subscribing to this channel, and sharing it with others. Thanks for watching. Please be good to yourself.